It's been a little while since I've made a video about a new Chinese electric car, and this one really piqued my interest. You know why? This is the cheapest five meter long electric car that I've seen anywhere in the world. If you found a cheaper one and it's legit, let me know. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking, great to see you. It's another awesome day, another awesome week. We've had heaps of new technology come out this week. I've just made a video about actual flux motors. I'm not talking about back to the future. I'm talking about real actual flux motors. They are quite interesting. Check out that video. Mercedes claims they will revolutionize the industry. Now this car here isn't claiming to revolutionize the industry. Far from it in fact but it is claiming to be incredibly good value for the size. It's massive. It's as big as a Tesla Model S, in fact, slightly bigger. And it only costs 30,000 US dollars. With all the fruit, all the trimmings, it's 32,000 US dollars. Unbelievably good value. So what am I talking about? What is this car? Well, the name is Hongqi EQM5. Hongqi are a brand owned by FAW Group, one of the biggest groups in China, state-owned group. Essentially, this is a Chinese-made car by the Chinese government, basically, when it comes down to it. Now, the FAW Group is a Chinese state-owned automobile manufacturer headquartered in China and founded in 1953. It is currently the second largest of the big four state-owned car manufacturers in China, together with SAIC Motor, Dongfeng Motor, and Chang'an Automobile. They actually produced their first car all the way back in 1958, which kind of surprised me. I didn't know the Chinese made cars back in 1958, but they did. Now, the Hongqi EQM5 Plus electric sedan was actually officially launched in China on the 17th of August, priced at 30,600 US dollars, or 207,800 RMB. This new car is an upgraded version of the Hongqi EQM5 launched in March last year. And the brand is actually best known for its ultra-large limousines, which are extremely expensive. For some reason, this virtual nearly limousine-sized car is incredibly affordable. And the car was developed with China's ride-hailing giant Didi Shuxing. Several brands have developed cars exclusively for ride-hailing, including BYD and Hong Chi's sister brand, Bestium. The size, how big is it? Well, it's 5 meters long, 5,040 millimeters, 1,910 millimeters wide, and 1,569 millimeters high. It's got a wheelbase of 3 meters, making it a pretty big car. To give you an idea of just how big it is, the Tesla Model S is shorter. It's 2,960 millimeters long, so it's 80 millimeters shorter. To give you an idea of size, the Model S is shorter. It's 4,980 millimeters longer, so it's about 60 millimeters shorter. It's got a wheelbase of 2,960 millimeters and a width of 1,964 millimeters. Now, carnewschina.com says that the front face is decorated with straight waterfall chrome trims. The split type headlights are integrated with the grille. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the look of the front of it. I think it's okay. It doesn't really stand out to me as saying, wow, probably because I've just been looking at Dodger's latest electric muscle car, the Charger SRT, which looks absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. In comparison to me, this doesn't really stand out. But honestly, for 30,000 US dollars, I'd be more than happy to put up with those average looks. Now let me know if you agree or you disagree in the comment section below. Looks are very subjective, of course. As for the rear, carnewschina.com claims the rear looks amazing and sensational. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the rear of it either, but honestly, who cares? When it comes to the interior, on the other hand, I quite like it. It's minimalist, it's simple, it's nice looking, looks a lot better than a Toyota interior, that's for sure. And I'll be happy to sit in that thing. Let me know if you would. The interior actually comes with a 10-inch center screen for the driver. And the infotainment system supports voice recognition and voice control. I don't know if it would work with my voice. I'm going to guess it's probably not tuned for an Australian accent. As you can imagine, legroom in the rear is 
capacious, it's large, it's spacious. It's a place you probably wouldn't mind spending some time. Now the trunk volume is surprisingly small. It's only 433 liters. I'm guessing that's because they've tried to give as much leg room to the rear passengers as possible, which has actually made the trunk or the boot smaller than what it would otherwise have been. However, there is actually space for two 28 inch suitcases or three 20 inch suitcases, according to Hong Chi. Now what actually powers this thing? Is it any good? Would you consider buying one? Well, it's got a permanent magnet synchronous motor with maximum power of 140 kilowatt and peak torque of 320 newton meters. To be honest, it's fairly underpowered for a car of its size when it comes to horsepower. But torque, yeah, torque is adequate. It'd be fine. Certainly no speed rocket though. And that's probably one of the reasons why it gets pretty good range and pretty good efficiency. Range is 605 kilometers in this base model we're looking at right now. And the battery pack is a lithium ternary battery. It's not an LFP battery, not a lithium ion phosphate battery. It's a lithium ternary battery using nickel and cobalt. Battery size is 82 kilowatt hours. So if you think about it, right, you're paying 30,000 US dollars for a car with an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's a big, big battery pack. Imagine if you wanted to buy, say, the equivalent amount of energy storage, you know, eight Tesla Powerwalls. What that, what's that going to cost you? A lot more than this car, right? A heck of a lot more. You could buy this thing and just use it for energy storage, which is what I'm doing with a Chinese car right now. It works really well. Now, 30,000 US dollars. What I want to know is, would you consider buying one? A range of 600 kilometers. I mean, if you only get 500 kilometers out of the thing, that's still an impressive range for 30,000 US dollars. This gives you a good idea, though, of the future, right? A lot of Chinese car makers are bringing their cars to Australia, to Europe, to North America, to Canada, to the United States, to the UK, to New Zealand, to Singapore, to Thailand, to Cambodia, to India, to many different South and Central American countries. Their cars are coming now and they're starting to come faster and faster and faster before you know it. This actually could be a legitimate choice. Now, for you Aussies, it's around 40000 Australian dollars for a five-meter-long electric car with an 82-kilowatt pack, you know, 600 kilometers of range on the NEDC cycle, 500 kilometers in the real world. That, to me, seems like an absolute bargain. Am I missing something? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.